G'day guys and welcome to another installment of Kenny Talks Cladding. I'm Kenny and this is soon going to be cladding. What are we going to do? So this is my wall and I'm Kenny and today on Kenny Talks Cladding we're going to put that on. The wall, the cladding on that wall. That's what we're doing. So today I've got our first year apprentice Alex working with us to give me a hand because uh, it's a two-man job at some parts. I could do it myself, but you know, my wife would really like the wall finish. So I'm getting Alex to give us a hand, so you'll see him round about. He doesn't want to be on camera, but hey, he'll be alright. He'll have some fun. And hopefully you can have some fun and you can learn something in watching our little video that we do for you. Alright guys, let's get into it. Right, so what are we actually going to be doing today? We're going to be installing the cladding, starting from the right to the left. But first we have to put our toe mold on and our head flashing on. We've got to cut back and put this gutter back a bit. Uh, then we've got to put our side flashing. We're going to move forward in a process which makes it so that we finish as we go. So what are we doing today, guys? We're going to be putting some awesome, world-class, world-standard, fantastic colour bond. Oh, I love colour bond. So I'm excited today because we're putting it on my house and I get to come out here every day and look at it and be just amazed by it. I just love colour bond. Here we go. We're going to put some cladding on the wall. Guess what cladding it is? It's colour bond cladding. Very, very excited put colour bond on my wall. It is Highland Tray 165 and 265 from Stratco. It's going to go on the wall there and finish up over there and it's going to look amazing. I promise you it will. Stick with us to the end of this little video that we do and you'll get to see how this green sarked and battened wall which looks pretty tacky turns into a piece of art which I get to come home to, sit down, have a glass of wine and just look at instead of TV. All right guys, let's get into it. And first what we're gonna do is make sure these bad boys, we put these on. So we've got our tools, we've got our snips, we've got our, uh, we've got our snips, we've got our uh, Stanley knife, riveter, drills, impact drivers, we've got our blower to make sure we get the swarf off, we've got our little ruler, we've got our squares, we've got our little bits and pieces, we've got our folders, we've got a hammer, chisel. We've got all these things and we're gonna to need to use them on this job to make it look really, really good. So, here we go. Right there I've got that toe mold in basalt mat. It is fantastic basalt mat. If you haven't seen it, uh, ring me up and ask for an invitation to come around and have a look because it's fantastic. I love this stuff. The, this basalt mat toe mold is going to go on the bottom here, ready to be received, to receive our sheets down onto the bottom of it. It acts as the barrier for the roof. Now, for the roof, no, we're doing wall cladding. It acts as a barrier for the wall. So let me show you how it works. Oh, firstly, we're handling color bond steel. We need to put gloves on. Because I did a video the other day and I didn't put gloves on because I was just doing the work around the house and I cut myself on the back of my hand. Then I put gloves on and I was good. So first things first, throw some gloves on. It's very important for safety that you put the gloves on because if you're not experienced with handling the steel, you'll cut yourself and it's really bad. It, it, it's, it will mess you up. It's just, it's not fun to put gloves on. So here we are. That's what the shape of it looks like at the end. It's gonna go on the wall just like that. Down here. Find it under there. And we're gonna lift that up and sit it underneath there. So, I'll get all that prepped up and get back to you. Now we've come and we've put this toe mold finally after cutting the two little pieces to make it fit really nicely on the bottom at each end. We've got it sitting in a position ready to slide up and install underneath here. Now, going back to a previous video where I spoke about the height that we're going to do that, well I'm matching that height over there, which is 40 mils off the ground. So what I need to do is mark on the wall 40 millimeters at the, the highest point and then level it out from there. So now Alex and I, we're about to put this in. He's got his, he's got his screw gun, his impact driver, and we're going to slot it in place. We've marked out 40 mils and we're going to get that. Now you jump on this side, Alex. I'm going to take my belt off because I'm going to have to lay on the ground. I don't go lying around on the concrete all the time, but you know, sometimes what you've got to do is what you've got to do. We're going 
going to go underneath the sake. Yeah. And to draw the sake out, that will enable you to have to come on, put it past the one being pinned. Just pull it out. Sorry? Pinned, pinned. Pull, pull yeah, yeah, pull that. That's it. Doesn't matter, Rick. Nope. Yep. so that the bubble lines up between these two here. We want this bubble here to be dead centre of the two. So Alex, the lower you're in. Yeah. And you could give it one more whack, Alex. One, a good one. That's it. So I'm pretty happy with that now. And we'll put a couple more screws in. put a screw in the bottom underneath each one of those because right now that's just holding it on nice and tightly so Alex is going to go through and put an extra screw underneath each one of these which will actually penetrate through the carbon flashing so now we're going to go through and put our top flashing in or our safete flashing is what you could call it some people call it a soffit but we're not that flash so in Australia all we call it safete we're going to throw that safete up there so that it takes our sheets. We'll put our sheets in. This is feet. We're going to put it in so we've got no fixings afterwards. So once we put the sheets in up underneath there, happy days. So now we've got this um, the feet flashing, and I've done a little stop end up there, which is going to go up above the roof. I'm going to put it in place. And I'm going to mark this, and I'll just walk through that. So at the moment it's butting in, it's, it's being interfered with by the little bit of uh, Safit beading which is around the side of the weatherboard wall. So but I can still mark this out and because we're lining up the flashing from with the end of this wall, so I'm going to mark the flashing up and I'm going to take it down and cut it up. <laughs> All right, so now we've cut this end, we've stop ended that end, and it's ready to be installed up there. We're gonna take our drill up with us, a riveter up there with us, and we're gonna, but before we, we jump up, we need to peel the plastic off, because it's a lot easier to peel the plastic off now than it is afterwards. Okay, because the plastic's actually there, not for the purpose of us working with it to protect it, it's there so when the folders, the machines at the flashing shop that fold this into the shape that it is out of a flat piece of coil, it's there to protect the, the jaws that clamp on it and twist and fold and bend. Not there for us. However, it does help. Now you see I just rolled it up in a ball. That's just out of habit of not wanting to clean up a big mess when we're doing lots of lots of flashings. Up here, I need to clean off a little bit of the paint that got stuck between the original beading that was there with the first weatherboard wall, and so that we can get our flashing to sit up really, really nice. So that we put a fixing straight through here into the batten behind it. So once we get that, we just push it up nice and tight. We 
We're gonna put a rivet in. So, to sit our rivet in place, uh, having so many tools to be fun. Always do this one at a time. So you put a rivet in this side, and then you go and put a rivet in this, that side there. If you do them both at the same time, you lose being able to get your leverage on that side. The other thing you have to be worried about, or you have to really take notice of, is that when putting this up, your drill, the chuck of your drill here has the potential to scratch your the flashing there, which you don't want because you've got a beautiful new flashing, like wall cladding. You don't want scratches all over it, you don't want touch up paint on it. Although touch up paint is okay, you want to minimalize it as much as possible. So I can assist you all with the making sure the pressure stays up, okay? Because otherwise you're yeah, you drop. Yeah. Alright, so I'm pressing up as high as I can. And you're going, what you want to do, yeah, is you want to your batten's gonna be about there. That's the bottom of the batten. So you want to aim to put your hole somewhere around there at that kind of height. So you can mark up on there. Look underneath and by eye work out where the bottom of the button is, yeah? So you're gonna mark the top of the button and you wanna mark where you're gonna put your rivet. It's an approximate. Okay. Now when you put your drill up on that, you wanna look at it from the perspective that you're not gonna hit the chuck on that lip there. Yep. So off you go. So you're gonna hit the chuck all over it right there. So you wanna lower your where your point is. So you see where the body yeah, you like go in more like that, get it slowly started. Once you're through the, hang on, stop a sec. Once you're through the flashing, that's where you turn your angle and you bring it down so that you're gonna get the chuck away from this flashing. So in this scenario, there is no real set amount of rivets that you need to place into this flashing. However, I'm estimating or guesstimating my spacings and doing every 500, 600 millimeters. So now that we've got the toe mold on and the safete flashing on, I need to just quickly do this section here that wraps from the wall out and up. Then we're gonna move forward by to putting our first sheet on the wall. That's really exciting. So there we have it. We've flashed around the top. We've got our sapete flashing on, we've got our tone wall flashing on down the bottom, and we are ready to start putting some cladding on. So, Alex, let's go get some pies, hey? Have some lunch. What do you reckon? Yeah. Fantastic. See you on the other side of it.